next up, we have uh, someone who has been with us before. He is not a stranger to uh, Virtual Water Expo attendees and, and uh, those of you that, that visit water online quite frequently. And as I mentioned previously, we have a number of these uh, speakers um, here with us today. But uh, I don't want to delay any further because I'm really looking forward to this presentation. It is the integration of efficient blower technology, and it's going to be brought to you by none other than Stephen Horn, who is the product manager for Kaiser Compressors. So, Stephen, it's all you. Okay, thank you, Travis. Um, yeah, as mentioned, we're going to talk about the integrating efficient blower technology. Um, this is uh, kind of a topic that uh, we're seeing more and more, and uh, we'll dive right into uh, why I say that. Uh, but before we get too far ahead of ourselves, um, I'm going to bring up the term efficiency. We hear it talked about a lot, uh, even today. And so uh, within the blower world, uh, we use the term efficiency, but uh, a more specific way to talk about that is isentropic efficiency. And it's just a, a percentage or ratio. Um, and when we talk about isentropic power, which is kind of your ideal power mathematically if you were to throw in your pressure and your flow into a formula you can what we call isentropic power and you divide that by your real power which you're actually consuming at that flow rate from the machine that you have and this becomes what we call isentropic efficiency so this is kind of vague engineering uh, talk so a way to bring that home to you is that um uh, inefficiency shows up in heat and the amount of heat being rejected from a blower. So obviously a more efficient blower means that it runs much less cooler. So this is beneficial from a host of different uh, reasons from not just thinking about the machine mechanically uh, running cooler, uh, keeping oil and lubricants and just the components cooler. Also reduce the amounts of heat being rejected into the room that the equipment is sitting in. And then lastly, the discharge temperature, the air coming out of the blower is cooler, which is better um, more times than not for uh, your process or your system um, and in the wastewater process that you're aerating. So when we talk about efficiency, these are the benefits. And of course, I, I didn't put it on the slide, but clearly uh, less power consumption, uh, piggybacking off of what was just discussed in the previous presenter. Um, so let's get into it here. What, what are we looking at? Well, these are the blowers that we uh, most commonly see being used in the wastewater industry. Uh, we at Kaiser make uh, some of these as well. Uh, we have the rotary lobe. Um, this is a positive displacement uh, roots type blower, as people call them. Um, they've been around since the Victorian era, and uh, they uh, operate in isentropic efficiency at this point from 45 to 65 percent. Um, then we have the multi-stage. Uh, the multi-stage blowers are very popular in the United States here in wastewater plants. Uh, if you stop at 10 wastewater plants, you're bound to find uh, at least 50 percent of them or more will have a multi-stage uh, machine in there. Uh, much like the rotary load blower, uh, more traditional technology, uh, the efficiency rating of 45 to 60 percent. And now we graduate to some newer technologies. Um, and neither one of these are really new in the sense of the engineering world uh, or have being made before, but really they're becoming prevalent in the wastewater market and uh, being optimized. Um, first, we start with a rotary screw. Like a rotary lobe, this is positive displacement, but you can see the jump in efficiency. Uh, they tend to run between that 65 to 80 percent range. And then we have uh, the high speed turbo. Um, so these are also very popular. And like the multi stage, they are dynamic machines and they operate to 50 and in some cases greater than 80 percent isentropic efficiency. So these are the blowers that are existing in the market. And if we're talking about new technologies and uh, bringing efficiency in, we can immediately see that if you are an existing user, an existing plant, which has one of these older technologies, um, then uh, jumping to uh, one of these new technologies could offer you significant savings. But I think anytime we're talking about uh, just throwing in a new technology, we also have to think about the application and what it's being used for. So um, wastewater plants, they have many blowers doing many different things. Um, so uh, I guess the question is, 
you know, what are you using the blower for and how is it being utilized? And of course, uh, these new technologies are not inexpensive. They come at a, a rather hefty price tag. So the question is, well, am I going to get anything out of this? And really, this comes down to two, really two factors. Uh, what is your system pressure and how long does the blower operate during a day? Um, not to say that uh, a lower pressures, uh, the other blowers are more efficient, is it that the new technologies uh, really start to show those numbers I was mentioning, 80% efficiency versus 50% efficiency. This is really at the higher pressure ends. So when we start talking getting into 7, 8, 9, 10, up to 15 PSI, which you wouldn't usually have that higher pressure wastewater plant, but those higher pressures are where you start to see uh, the efficiency numbers really kick in. And then the next question is, well, how long do you run the blower? Does it come on for 15 minutes uh, once a week? Well, you know, you can spend a whole lot of money on a super efficient blower and you're really not going to see the benefit from it. So we really want to target those applications where the blowers are running all the time. So the more that's running, the more electricity that's burning, and the more potential that you have for saving uh, greater savings from uh, jumping up to one of these new technologies. Now, the technology has evolved, but so has equipment and packaging of the equipment. Um, so here we can see on the left, uh, maybe something that you have, maybe not a yellow Kaser machine, but probably something very similar, where you have um, a, a low rotary low blower, in this case, with a motor and a silencer. Um, and a lot of times, uh, these machines were shipped either uh, as components and they had to be assembled on site. Um, this is more the real traditional way of doing it. Uh, and then uh, many of the uh, manufacturers, um, such as Kaiser and others, uh, maybe some even talking today, came out with uh, factory packages. So really we took the, those old uh, technologies and made them into a nice package with an enclosure and you had your relief valves and silencers and everything already uh, configured into a nice box that you could set on the floor. Um, but now uh, with these newer technologies such as the screw blowers and absolutely the turbo machines, uh, here we see a Kaiser screw blower, but this is also true for turbos where um, they come as complete units. Uh, so they have the variable frequency drive on them. They have a whole host of sensors. And more importantly, they have a, a local controller or PLC um, on them. So the manufacturers have gone through the trouble of taking everything that you could need for a machine and have incorporated it into a complete unit, an end product. Uh, so here, this has lots of advantages where the manufacturer has the ability to write codes and scripts inside this controller uh, for both uh, protection, maintenance, as well as control. With that, the controllers have, uh, this brings us into, well, the machine has a controller on it. Now what do I do? I have this efficient machine. I got the controller on it. Yeah, you can just run it like you're running the old technology and you'll see uh, benefits. But, you know, uh, as we saw through uh, the recent times with the COVID and people wanting integration, being able to dial in and see things remotely and being notified. Well, this brings us to integration. Um, and these new controllers are really great for this because most all of them have the ability to talk different um, uh, different communications or different uh, technologies. So uh, here we have uh, uh, integrate uh, uh, bus communication languages. So we have Profibus, Modbus, uh, Profinet, Ethernet IP, DeviceNet. These are all just languages. Um, like you have English, Spanish, French, German, Italian. These are all different languages which are spoken by computers. So uh, you have the ability to have your master PLC or whatever talk directly to the controller in real time and extract data from the controller and use that in your uh, determination of control or process information um, or pulling uh, maintenance information, alarm information, and more importantly, uh, different ways to control the unit, starting it and stopping it and all these different things. Uh, you can extract out of the machine and put on to your plant PLC or SCADA system. So um, all these machines have this ability to it. Um, so you can uh, 
plug in your uh, cables and extract the data out from the controller. This brings us to machine control itself and uh, what your philosophy is at your plant and how you're doing it. So these, I think, are the ones that uh, we are seeing in the field. You have your basic system where you turn the machine on and off. Uh, most likely this can be by time. Uh, sometimes people will do this uh, based upon when the flow comes into the plant or if they're measuring DO levels. They cycle them on and off. This has lots of different benefits depending upon your process. Um, and this can be done by any most any technology. I excluded multi-stage here just because it can be done with them, but in my experience out in the field, usually the multi-stages are running aeration and running uh, mostly all the time. Then you have speed control. So this is uh, something, a derivation of adding VFDs to machines. Uh, so you had a VFD connected to the blower now, and you can just run at speed up and down. Um, so this is uh, great because you can alter the speed, match uh, production to what the, the system demand is. But the, the speed control kind of lacks uh, the ability for the plant controller to know where the limits are of the machine. You get to tell where the limits are. And sometimes these limits are not fixed. Now, we'll talk about it here in a second, but the limits of the machine can vary with ambient condition as well as operating pressures. And uh, to this point, we really haven't really thought about that in industry. But with the addition of controllers, the controllers are thinking about that. So um, we now have the ability to do other things, uh, which we'll talk about here in a second. And the last one, next one I have here is modulating and throttling. This one is mostly done on multi-stages. You could, in theory, throttle a turbo blower, and I think that some manufacturers do some of that. But more uh, times than not, with the high-speed turbos, we are adjusting the speed of the unit. Um, and then the next one we have here is... Uh, flow control um, and flow control allows the controller to be the one to read uh, the conditions of the machine as well as the ambient and adjust the, the machine accordingly. Uh, so this last one here is just the indication um, of uh, we talked about the control mode, the, the control parameters changing, but here we can see um, how this all comes together where you have your PLC monitoring uh, what's going on in the basin. You have data cables going to the machines, data being exchanged back and forth. Each unit um, can uh, have its own individual IP address, which allows the PLC to monitor each individual, each machine individually, and then optimize the plant control um, for the system um, as, uh, uh, as, as needed. Okay, all right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I can't hear you. That's correct, Travis. Uh, but uh, I am finished. So uh, thanks to everybody. I think you might be back now. And uh, I wish you all the best and sorry for the uh, technical problems.